Juan, today House members will vote to approve a short term increase of the country's debt limit. Our Washington DC correspondent Joe St. George, he joins us now from live from the nation's capital with an in-depth look at what the vote means and what comes next. Joe, good morning and thank you for your time as always. Now the Senate passed the $480 billion increase last week. Can you break down for us what today's debt ceiling vote means and how it's all going to work? Yeah, well, first and foremost, today's vote in the House will be relatively drama uh, free. The drama surrounding the debt ceiling was all in the U.S. Senate. They were able to resolve those differences, at least temporarily, uh, in that chamber last week. So today's vote in the House, expected sometime perhaps in the early evening hours, will be relatively quick, relatively simple. At least that's the expectation here on Capitol Hill. President Biden will sign it, will avert uh, a default on our nation's credit, which was set to take place on October 18th, unless Congress acted. But you know, this isn't really solving the problem. A lot of people around here on Capitol Hill have said, and it's cliche, it's kicking the can down the road, but to some degree, uh, it certainly is. Now, $480 billion may sound like a lot of money to you and me, uh, but when it comes to our nation's debt, uh, when it comes uh, to the debt ceiling, it really isn't a lot of money. And economists uh, have estimated that that's only going to get us until about early December, perhaps uh, mid-January if the Treasury Department gets a few more resources. Uh, so this means that we're going to be having this exact same conversation in just a few short weeks. So clearly the definition of kicking the can down the road. And honestly, it doesn't seem like a clear resolution, at least a long-term resolution is in sight. Are there any, if any at all, clear resolutions on the table? I mean, what comes next? It seems like there are a lot of, everything's up in the air still. Yeah, you're right. Well, uh, it's politics in 2021, right? A lot of uncertainties. Uh, Democrats have said that the debt is a bipartisan problem and it deserves a bipartisan solution. Uh, Republicans, they compromised to some degree last week in the Senate, uh, allowing a vote uh, to raise it. But already, Senator Mitch McConnell, who leads Republicans in the Senate, have written a letter uh, to President Biden saying, don't count on his support again. So what is one path forward as we, we're, we see this division still is that it, it perhaps rests in the Democratic agenda. Remember, Democrats are trying to pass uh, trillions of dollars worth of new spending, new societal programs uh, in the coming weeks. It's really becoming crunch time for, for President Biden's agenda. We've talked about infrastructure for weeks. Right. There's a separate bill, that partisan spending bill, which is in the trillions of dollars. That separate spending bill is only going to pass with Democratic votes. So there is one way in which they could sneak an increase in the debt ceiling long term into that piece of legislation. That's one uh, possible path forward. But, you know, it's going to be uh, an issue taking center stage along with President Biden's agenda in the coming weeks. And it, we've really entered the stage, guys, here on Capitol Hill, where Democrats are going to have some tough decisions to make. Uh, for, for months, they've talked about how big this bill is going to be. But the reality is, is that the only way this bill passes is if they start shrinking and cutting. Moderate Democrats simply don't want a bill that's worth over $3 trillion. We'll see how the negotiations play out in the coming weeks. You know, Joe, it was nice to see some type of um, agreement or compromise play out uh, with Republicans uh, compromising on this bill. Do you foresee that the Democrats may play ball and compromise on the next go round. Yeah, potentially we shall see, uh, but it's something that everyone needs to pay attention to, right? Because uh, a government shutdown is very different from this default crisis. To some degree, it's much more severe in a, in a government shutdown. Social security checks go out, but in a in a possible default, a debt ceiling crisis, social security checks would be delayed. So uh, if you're a retiree waking up this morning wondering how on earth does this debate impact you in Texas, it, it does it does uh, to a great degree impact your wallet, impact your family's wallet, no doubt. Joe, thank you so much as always for your time today, sir. We'll see you again next week. We appreciate